Welcome to Bookie's Place. You know what we do here. We don't talk about the glitz of the glam. We talk about the grit and the grind. We use this opportunity to equip people in this season with practical tools that they can use to do destiny. And I have a very, very special guest in the building today. Her name is Weird MC. You all know her. I don't need to talk too much. I'm just going to put her on because we need every second. And it's finna be lit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Deshalot Weird MC. What's up? What's up? What's up? B O U Q U I. Where to the MC? <laughs> What's going on? I am well, man. It don't take, man. We've been rocking since like 1654. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing man? What's going on? Man, I'm good. I'm really Listen, I'm really excited. I'm excited. I can't even wait cuz man, I've known you for a long time. And long you see time. the thing though, is we bring we bring <laughs> music out. We bring the music that people want to listen to. But when they sit down with us and like, you're so deep and I'm like, uh, am I supposed to be stupid? Y'all want to listen. I do Hip hop songs, you know, listen to Bamba, to Bamba, and I talk with you, I sit with you, and I hear the things you say. And let me tell you this: very few people stimulate me intellectually, and you will want mm. them. You are deep. Thank you, are you, thank you, thank you, thank you. For real, though. So this is Bookie's place. Like I was saying before, you came <laughs> on. Welcome everybody. If you're just joining, it's gonna be off the chains. I have the one and only Weird MC Deshala Weird MC in the building. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I'm, super excited. I'm super excited. And you see, so what yeah. we do in Bookie's place is we equip people practically with tools. Someone had a job for like 20 years as a banker. and in the twinkling of an eye something takes it away from them and they don't understand where to start from they don't know what to do you know so we share our story so that someone can say you know what if where it went through that and she's standing i can stand too i have no yes. excuses so this zone is no excuse zone you have no excuse to fail if you know if you have your dream because what we do is we conceive a dream and it's so little but what we do we compare it to someone else's finished product and we fall short yep. and we take the dream and dust it and say you know what i don't even care anyway so what we want them to see is the part that nobody shows someone was mm. telling us yesterday that nobody shows you the time they cry on instagram they give you the best side they give you the made, made up side so when i'm done talking now It's over to you. You're going to start from the very beginning where you were born and we go with that journey and we take it from there. Wow. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Bookie. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start from, man, but hmm. Woo. Start from where you My were journey. Born. Start my from journey. Where you were born. Ah. Okay. I was born in the United Kingdom. Mhm. Mm uh I was like seven years old. and our parents brought us back to nigeria mm -hmm. that, that was like culture shock right there immediately do you get me um i remember the very first thing you know we were used to like munching on the um, juicy sausages sausages mm -hmm. and then one 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 day my 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 father comes home with 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 a gala roll <laughs> and immediately i could tell the difference i'm like what is this my dad said this is nigeria get eat it get eat it get used to it no more yummy this is gala this is our own sausage roll mm -hmm. you know i have to say this relocating back to nigeria is one of the uh, it was a that, that was one of the um things that my parents did that was such a huge huge blessing mm -hmm. you understand it was like reality culture the music the sounds the people i learned to speak yoruba language i could speak ijebu language Our, our grandparents were always at home we were really really grounded culturally it was it was it was one of the, the best things that my parents ever ever did for me bringing me back home i i feel like if i was left if i was left back here at that time i would have i would have gotten lost mm. so 
you understand it, it just helps you to stay grounded mm-hmm. there's something that it brings into the mix mm-hmm. you understand and then i started to go to school you know young girl but tomboy at heart playing football playing basketball everything you know okay you have no idea you have no idea <laughs> going down to the village going down to the village in ijabu the village in ijabu were hunting for bush rats wow imagine i used to follow the guys into the bush Then one day, hey, Buki, then one day, me and my junior brother were like, these, these um, village guys, they're sort of like swiping us. We can do this and we have skills. So we went into the bush ourselves. Not realizing that, man, God is good. Buki, forget. There's a, there's, there's a method. There's a way the bush rats dig their holes in comparison to how the snakes dig their holes. So we put the fire, put the paper, we were fanning and fanning and fanning, you know, and then the thing tried to break his head out. We're like, ah, but this bush, okay, tell you, okay, tell you, Toby, go, hey, we're going to catch this bush rat today. <laughs> then all of a sudden, <laughs> ah, <laughs> come and see us in the middle of it. Oh my goodness, man. But you see, my life, eh? My life, my life is like a coat of many colors. I've had all sorts of experiences. It's, it's just amazing. When you bring it back, when you bring it together, it's like a, an awesome jollof, jollof pot, jollof dish, you know. Mm-hmm. Stay back home, went to Maryland Comprehensive Secondary School, you know, fell in love with rap music. I used to listen to Wodini, you know, um... Run DMC, Salt and Pepper, Kumo D. I'm like, yeah. whoa. But I hadn't made up my mind because I was playing football, playing basketball, and doing music. So I kept going. But the pull to do music was really, 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 really strong. Like, whoa. The rhythm, you know, there's this freedom that comes with doing hip-hop music. You know, you just, you just do your thing. You just express yourself. You know, the words, the sound, the ambience, the energy on stage. And I just went with the music. You understand? Mm. Then the time came, went back again to the United Kingdom, started to hone my craft, started to do Club 291 contests, kind of like talent contests. Like the Club 291 in the United Kingdom is like the, the British, you know, equivalent of the Apollo In, in, the United, in, in the United States, you know, that's where you hone your craft, you're on stage, people, people can boo you off stage, oh, you yes. see someone come to see a baseball bat, you know, and, but I stood my ground like, hey, hey little, this is Niger, mm-hmm. you understand? Mm-hmm. Went through that, you know, put an ad in the, in the um, Hip Hop Connection magazine, mm-hmm. got hooked up with a producer, started recording songs, did Want to Make You Jack, Turn Up the Heat, and one other song, you know, And we hit the underground scene in the United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Then Jackson, New Jackson was really, really like popular. You know, we had, you know, we had, um, we had, um, ah, what's this guy's name? Teddy Riley, Aaron Hall, Keith Sweat, Bobby Brown, you know. So I'm like one day doing a show and we're seeing Aaron Hall and we're thinking, hey, we have arrived, you know. Because um, they put one of my songs called Wanna Make You Jack. On the mm-hmm. on a um, UK Jack Swing album compilation, so I was mm-hmm. like, "Can you imagine?" Hey, and I'm thinking, Aaron Hall is bumping his head. I'm like, "Yes, Ati arrives." Say, that's what's going on. We just kept pushing, doing shows, and I think the major turning point for me was um, MC Light was in the United Kingdom, and her opening act had pulled out. So someone had heard about me and gave me a call. It was like 10, 11 at night. Oh, hi, can I speak to Word MC? Blah, 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 blah. We've heard about you. You're really, really good. You know, you're confident on stage. We got a support slot for you. And I'm like, a support slot. And then they mentioned, the, I think it was the, the Ch- one of the, those huge, you know, venues in Charing Cross. And I was just like, who, who? And it's like, wait for it. And it's like, MC Light. Ah, Bookie. I'm like, what? MC Light? Who? You understand? When he put the phone down, I screamed like, MC Light! You know, you know, she had that song, Roughneck. Gotta, gotta, watch you, gotta get a roughneck. Ah, mm-hmm. hey. Keep, after, after receiving the phone call, I, di- I didn't go to bed. Oh, I started rehearsing just on my own. I called up my brother. Guess what? Ah, my brother was like, hey, MC Lights, irony. He came to the house like 5 a.m. in the morning, called up the dancers. 
ah, we started grinding, you know, rehearsing. We had to get this right. This is a major, major shot, you know. Got to the, got to the venue, did our performance slot. People were loving it. She was loving it. I was like, I can do this. I can do this. But I will tell you what the major challenge was, Bookie. I kept shopping my, my stuff to, to, the, um, to the major labels, to the independent labels. Some would say the music sounds too white. Some would say the music sounds too black. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. ah, what kind of wahala is this? Mm -hmm. I am black. And yes, my music has a crossover appeal. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I just, I guess I, it, th that, was just, that was just part of the journey. Mm -hmm. I kept pushing. I kept pushing. Then somewhere along the line, I ran into a couple of music consultants called the Sholaris. Are you doing Sholari? So I was like, there's, a, there's this new label just coming out. Buy your banjo. This entertainment is shopping for, for talent you know, and everything. And I'm like, okay, I could do an LPDD kind of deal. I don't want to do a straight out recording contract. I don't want to be tied to anybody. So we did an LPD kind of deal. They were like, you know, we're tied to the label. We've been charged with the responsibility to get the talent. And I'm like, I'm down. And, I was, and coincidentally, I was supposed to come back to Nigeria in about two months' time. So I, I, I traveled down like a month later got the deal, you know, we vet the contract and it was a deal. There was, there was just two of us. It was just me and Femi Kuti. And that was the beginning of my journey, you know, and I just finished recording Island Avenue and I just thought it will, it will make sense. This is Niger. So we dropped the first single, Island Avenue and Bookie, boom, it just took off. There was Clapperboard, you know, Clapperboard was, 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 Clapperboard TV was inside the same compound, so couple of they were just blasting it and blasting it and blasting it. Then we had to go back to the studio, put some more songs together, put out the album, Simply Weird. And that was the beginning of the journey. And we kept pushing, doing shows. It was really, really difficult. People didn't want to give me, people didn't, didn't want to give me a look in first I was female. And they, they didn't get the sound. They didn't get me at all. They were like, what kind of music is it? We don't understand. Where's she coming from? What's in BDC? You know, that kind of thing. Because at the time, they were used to pop, reggae, and everything. So I was coming with something fresh. But they knew that there was something, there was something about, this, about this music, about this sound. So I kept pushing and pushing. And I'll never, I'll never forget something. You know, one day, Femi Akintide Johnson, Fudge, from Fame Magazine, he gave me a call. He was like, girl, we've had to create a category because of you. You know, I'm like, that's it. History in the making. So they had to create a category for hip hop music. I remember Faj and Kunle Bakari. So that was the beginning of the journey. We kept pushing. And then the magazine dropped, Hip Hop World magazine. So it was just, then there was Mode 9, Dr. Fresh. There was you. People were just popping out like, yes, that's what's up. And we just kept pushing and pushing. But it was hard. It was, we had to grind. Okay, you know how far now? We were doing shows 10,000 naira. We were doing shows 20,000 naira. You guys, but look, there were no millions. Of, I, I, was, I, was, I was pushing a Toyota Celica. That was my homer that time. That was my own homer. Yes, now, but we kept pushing and pushing, doing shows. Then luckily, um, kicking in Kano. You remember kicking the kind of came on his best and they just concerts. Um, rough bands came on, and we just started to put, we started to do tours. Then Chelsea Music Jam, Kenny and D1. It was just like a whole movement being birthed at that time. It was just like wow. And we just kept going and pushing and going and pushing. Uh, it was just like you, Sasha, everybody. But man, we just thank God. We thank God. We thank God, man. We thank God. So wow, that's an interesting story because. A lot of people don't understand that you were the you are the first female rapper in the whole of would I say Africa. A lot of people don't understand because you know how it is where seasons go and there are people that come up. Oh, Bookie is the first rapper. I am not the first female rapper. Sasha is not the first female rapper. It is someone that laid the blocks and we will do ourselves a great injustice, which I see a lot of this new generation doing, not giving props to the person who laid the foundation. Because then you mm -hmm. cannot build a house on something that mm -hmm. found it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you see a lot yeah, of people, yeah. you see all these new guys, you're saying hi to them, they're like, and you're like, hey, am I worried? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because somebody <laughs> laid the foundation. And so we use this opportunity on behalf of Sasha Blaze, everybody that has come after. Thank you for it. Because I know what I think. Blaze. Blaze. How is she? 
She's good. She's good. Woo! You know? Wow. Yeah, so that you you broke people, you know, when people walk in a path, this is the analogy. You're walking through a bush for you to see a path. Someone had an axe and they made mm. the path. Amen. So you can't just say you made the path and you know you made a path and you 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 made it for it to be a path. Someone took an axe and made the path. You know, so we give all honor to whom whom honor is due. And so we give you your props, we give you your flowers now. Thank you for laying that foundation for us, you know. Cuz even after we know what we still had to go through. When then mm. I remember I said this a couple of times on this show. Sonny Okosun bless his memory, you know. He saw me at NTA and I was on the TV, you know, that new dawn early morning and he was in the mm. back, you know. I was he was in the green room. I was on TV. This was 90 Nine or two thousand, and he called me and he said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm, I'm rapping." Okay, what is your name? Because the name I saw on the TV, I can't read. I said, "My name is Buki." He said, "So why did you write it like that?" I said, "I'm trying to, you know, like funky five." He looked at me and said, "Ah, <laughs> then you will confuse people if you want to sing." Okay, but do, you know, but I could have left this courage. I could have said, "Yeah, yes, but." Yes. There were so many opposition, but it's not my interview. It's your interview. Mm. So I just go kick it. I'm not I'm just going to shut up if you don't let me shut up. I will not shut up. Anyway, <laughs> the show is about identity, purpose, you know. I want you to tell Gina said I was chatting with Blaze. Yeah. I want you to Yeah, I'm just seeing that. Yeah, I want you to tell us the the part that decision making takes on the road to destiny cuz mm. every time you encounter a choice it's like a door like a couple of doors in front of you so you're literally choosing the door to enter into which will now ultimately take you to a destination that yeah. but people don't remember that choice you made they just say oh why yeah. do I meet myself here but you made that choice so tell us the role that decision making plays mm. Mm. in um hmm. at a point in time i had to choose between either living in london or to come back home mm -hmm. and i was really really nervous bookie i was you know ah, i'm like nigeria hip hop i don't know but i was still i was fired up so I took that risk. I just left everything behind. My senior brother, he thought I was nuts. He was like, what <laughs> Then I came back home. No, for real. Then I, I said, do you know what? Let me just go in there. You see, looking back, it was, it was a, some say take a free fall. But for me, it's faith. It's faith. Uh, see, uh, see what see what the Lord said to Abraham. Get thee out. Get thee out of thy country. From thy kindred. Unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. But Abraham had to move first. He had received the word. He had a choice. He could have stayed back in Haran. Or of Chaldees. But he, he went to Canaan. You understand? He moved. Mm. He heard and he moved. He had a choice. So I said, and I just went. I said, let me go. You never know. And I went, Buki. And boom, 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 the doors. Guys tried to bully me. Who be this? I said, I may be this. You understand? I'll be on stage. Energy. There was one, there was one artist. I go, I don't go name in name. <laughs> he came, said, man. You know, you know, you need to tone it down, all this energy on stage. You come on stage, and when you come off stage, it's a problem for us to follow up. I'm like, dude, sorry. Keep up. Keep Fine up. Fine tune your craft. Fine tune your craft. I, I, I'm sorry. I would not apologize for my energy on stage. I'm so sorry. Go back to the drawing board. Do your homework. You understand? And I would go on stage. I was like a soldier. Bookie, it's like I went to war because I knew the st I knew the odds were stacked up against me for real. Ah, it was only me now in the park. It was only me on my own for real. 
So sometimes when I see Onyeka, when I see Stella Moya, I used to go and ask them, but men, how did you guys, how did you stand? Uh, Onyeka will say, you have to stand, Shola. It's war. It's war up in here. And I stayed. And I kept pushing and grinding. Uh, there, there, were t there were moments of tears, but on my own. Nobody knew. There were moments. You understand? You know, people were used to do the female just be a backup singer. But you, you're coming. Remember now? Trousers, Timberland, boots, all hair off. You know, it was totally like against the norm. That like, who is this girl? The video, everything. But I stayed. I kept pushing. Kept doing the shows. Kept doing the shows. I remember my Benson and Ages, my Benson and Ages first concert. It was Skid Ikemefuna who pushed for me that I know this girl. She's really good. High energy. She's gonna be. She, she understands the concert culture. She used to stay in the United Kingdom. And they put me on. But what happened was that they put me on at the beginning of the show. So after my slot, I remember Giles came back to me and said, oh my, I think we made a huge mistake telling you to start off the show. This was kicking in Kano. He was like, we're, we're going to put you in Loud in Lagos. No way. You're going to be maybe the second to the last because your energy is really, really like crazy on stage. I'd, I'm never ever going to make that mistake again to put you People were angry, oh, book it out, eh? This girl, when did she come? Second to the last artist. Ah, who, you know? But I'm sorry, it's the gift. And then sometimes it's not even the gift, it's the, it's the, if I forget, it's the grace. It's what's in you that's shining through. You understand? You Even even before we get saved, there's just something in there. There's some, uh, we were created in his image and his likeness now. So there's something in there that people can, can draw from. They can, they can sense it. They, can, they latch onto it. And that was a huge... I remember now, Buki, my first show in Kikin and Kano, there were at least 50,000 people on that ground in Kano Stadium. Mm -hmm. I was on a high, man, like, Whoa! I remember that's when I met um, Idris Abdul Karim for the first time. Idris came to the show like, man, I'm inspired by you, a woman. You're doing hip hop music. I'm going to leave Kano. I have to come to Lagos. Oh, Which wow. I have to put up joints. What's going on? Yes. Yes. I was stunned. He came. He called me on the show and then he came to see me perform, you know. It, and you know, Idris, Idris has a loyal, loyal heart. You understand? Yeah. So book Decision making, deciding on what songs to record, what producer to use, your lyrics, how you and you know, say that time, no MTV, no Twitter, no Instagram, <laughs> nothing, man. What are you talking? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? Hey, JJ, I used to go to JJ in Radio One. Ah, I'm wow. here. It was like, yeah. JJ was really, really supportive. Yeah. NTA, NTA 10, NTA 2, NTA 7. <laughs> so, I'm checking. I remember now. Ah, man. Man, listen, yeah. as you're speaking, ah. I remember um, the uh, the Sound City Award that I was nominated for Best Video. Remember, you were sitting right in front of me and you went to sing. They called you up. This I would never forget because there are some things you do that just leaves indelible marks in our minds. They called you up to sing and the sound was not right. And yes. you were already on stage. You came from backstage and you said, cut it. I'm not doing this. If you guys don't get it right, we're not singing. Bang, let's go. We were all like, hey, all of us that we were ready to sing. Like, <laughs> and you, just, you know what? I'm not doing this. Get your stuff <laughs> backstage and come back. I was like, hey, everybody was like, <laughs> okay. You know, but you know, you oh Yes. You remember that? Oh, yes, I do. I do. You know, you, you've laid stones that, if we're wise, we should follow. Because you you had a, a, a five-minute to, you know, session, well, five-minute um, session to sing or whatever they call it now. Look, I'm out of touch with music, man. <laughs> you, you had <laughs> out of five-minute slots. Yeah. Out of five-minute slots. Yeah, you had yes. five-minute slot. And they, met, they were trying to mess it up. And he said, no, we're not doing that today. Not today. If you want me to sing. And Hawiti was beside me. Hawiti said, Mujeri, they shall laugh. Mujeri, they shall laugh. Anyway. Anyway. Amazing. So you took a huge <laughs> leap. And you came to Nigeria. A lot of people have lost their jobs, as you know. And they're afraid to start over. Hmm. They're afraid to start over. They're like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? 
You know, I want you to mm. tell us those things that you did practically. Because what we do here is we practically equip people. It's not enough to just say seven laws to be successful. Da, 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 da. We need to tell what did you do? You know what I'm saying? What did you do? Mm. That when I'm down, I can remember. You know what? Shall I said this? I can do this. So what did you do when you thought about, man, maybe I should move over to Nigeria? What did you have to fight? Because you know those voices in your head that won't mm. let you, they would keep telling you, well, I know it's shame, you are messy, you are good to, you know. How did you shut those voices down, one? Number two, what did you do practically to get to the deliberate steps? Thank you, Simon, Nade, or Ode, Ole. What were the deliberate mm. steps you took? I didn't have enough money, for starters, but the little money that I had, I just took the money, bought my tickets. Buki, I bought my ticket. I said, okay, Ibad, Ibad, my father has a house. I'll start from there. I'll come home. I just knew. I just made that move. I was scared. Let me not lie. I was shaking. I was very, very afraid because I was leaving, the, 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 uh, I was leaving the, my comfort zone to the unknown. But sometimes that's what you need to do. You cannot sit on your behind and feel that it's all going to be all hunky-dory. No, you've got, to, you've got to push ahead. You've got to move. Sincerely, you have to move. Ah, and I just said, okay. And I moved. And I said, Lord, it's in your hands. And I left. And I got on the plane. And I got on the plane. I reached out to the Sholaris. I'm in town. I'm here. What did we do? We started to set up the meetings. We went there. Uh, they started to get me registered. They said, let's go to the MCSN. Let's ensure all your, your collecting society, your publishing stuff, everything is, everything is on point. You know? And I said, I wanted to assemble a crew, my dancers and everything. Booking, even before any bookings, we, we had already started rehearsing our head. In my head, I had projected. No shows yet, or no bookings yet, or, but in my mind, my shows were coming. So I was preparing. I didn't want to be caught unawares. So I had my dancers okay. in place, manager in place, PA in place, everything in place, our costumes, our colors, how we want to be seen, how we want to like do our thing. Everything I had planned to, like, I didn't want to be caught by surprise. So you have to move. We will pray. I will pray. My, I remember one of my dancers, Emmanuel Osebi, he too, we will pray, he will pray with us. You know, we grabbed Annie from Femi Kuti. She's very, very good with choreography. They'll come to my house hours and hours. We just rehearse, put the choreography together. See, Buki, I already did my, um, my, my concept for the Island Avenue video. I knew what I wanted to see. You know, you know the, the intro, stop, Island, show up, Wale, enter, all those things. We planned it out. The concept for the video, way before, way before, G get me. We ensured that the lawyers were in place. I knew what I wanted on the contract. I took those steps, checked the deals. I want this put in. I don't want that out. I want this put in, you know, and showing that when I pen my signature, no one is going to hold me and grab me by the neck because once you put pen and paper to those things, bookie, that's it. So, hey, now we'll to get out of it. So I'm never, ever in a hurry to sign contracts. People, they, they say that I'm difficult. I say, whatever. Because once I've signed, I've signed. Mm -hmm. I see, I don't even use contracts. They are covenants. So you have to be careful. You understand? So that was all in place. Then I was like, man, I need to get a car. I need a car and everything. The, see, what you speak, always speak. Speak ahead. It will come. See, this was that we speak. This was that this was that I speak. They are spirits and they are life. Speak, speak. I just kept saying it. I needed a car. I needed a car. Before I knew what was happening, a cash, I, I had a car. You understand? But I did I was hustling. Do you know that 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 line you know, in a in a in a Lamide song? More hustle be your Miley. You understand? <laughs> it's so, oh, it's so cute how you take you. Jesus. It's so cute how you can quote Jesus and Olamide all in the same breath. <laughs> no, because I'm more hustle. You know, people say no, women don't do that. Women I say we're here to break the rules. Who, 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 who they talk that kind of thing? Say women they do it. We're here to break the rules. And that's what we did, you know. And that's why I said, Fudge called Shola. Ah, now, wow, we have to create a category because of you. We don't have a hip hop category. Because I said, no, do not lump me in the pop category. I'm not a pop artist. Mm -hmm. They wanted to say, best, best newcomer pop. I said, I'm not a pop artist. So they, they had to create a hip hop category at the Amen Awards. And I remember it was Liz Benson. 
and KS said, I gave me that award. Daddy Shoki and Daddy Shoki and I think um, Daddy Fresh were like, hey, if they're not give you this award, I just go, let's go, we go, we go scatter this place. They don't give you this thing, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember. I, so I you remember have to... you. I remember you did that to me in one award like that. They didn't give me the award, and you got so angry. You looked at me because you had already stood up, and the best video goes to, and it just called some words. You you stood up. You're like, no. I'm like, wait, it's okay, it's okay. You were like, no, no. I was like, it's alright. <laughs> No, but um, we're talking about what you're talking about. You're talking about it's first produced in the mind. You know your thoughts from your words, yes. your words yeah. from your action, your action from your habit, your habit from your character, and your character who right. you are. What you've done That's consistently right. over time will become what they know you as. Do you understand what mm. I'm saying? So I want you to tell how, us how you have come to make up your mind. Because you're very determined. And you mentioned something that's a really, really touchy subject, but we're just going to go there. We're going to just scratch the surface. You talked about signing contracts. Nobody's calling anybody. Nobody's calling me. Don't, but you understand what I'm saying? We're talking about signing contract contracts. What part does my desperation play? Ah, it plays a huge... Bookie, it plays a huge, huge... You see, when you're so dead, do you know some artists, some artists that I know, they just take, they just take the documents and they append their signature. They don't even, they don't check the clauses. They don't look at the terms and the conditions. Ah, book, you see that saying now, they said that the devil is hidden in the details. You have to check everything. What am I signing? What exactly? Do I have a, do I have an exclusion clause? If I want to leave, are there escalation clauses? You know, you know that there's there's, there's, there's an entry point mm. that when you start to soar, when you start to ship a, a certain amount of records, you can come back to the drawing board with your lawyers and renegotiate the contract and, it, and you know and in, and infuse an escalation clause so your percentage can go up because you've, you've infused an escalation clause right from the beginning. It ah oh boy, it they had me. I know they I know they do like this. And you know the blessing that I also had, I had an exposure through the musicians' union. Because I had musicians' union membership in the United Kingdom, so I was already exposed, you know, to how, you know, vetting your contracts, taking a look. How long is it for? What's the duration? What goes to you? What comes to you? What are you paying out? Then your 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 advances. Are your advances returnable or are they recoupable? They're two different things. A lot of artists don't know that. You know, I'm not supposed to return the advance you give me. You recall the advance that you give me. I don't return. You recall over time. You understand? Then there's something called commingling. Some people commingle their contracts. It will be like a three-in-one kind of thing. You see the publishing in there. You see the recording in there. You see the production in there. They, they, they camouflage it. They call it 360 degrees kind of contracts. No, they should be separated. Your publishing is your publishing. Your music is your music. Your merchandising or your tours, don't commingle your funds. Don't cross the wires. Don't start bringing the terms and conditions. Give me a little, little. A bookie, man. It's stress. So I'm always adamant. Ah, they gave me a name now. They say I'm difficult. I say I'm not difficult. I know what I want. Me. You know, remember I started a page in the Hip Hop World magazine. Remember, I used to talk about those things, signing your contracts. The differences between a recording label and a recording and a recording yeah. and a label imprint. Yeah. The differences between a, a music producer and a music programmer, they are different. Your copyright in your sound recording and your copyright proper, they're two different things. You know, those things matter today. You have to be educated. You can't take those things for granted. Your publishing is your pension money. Mm. So you cannot joke around with your pension money. You understand? Who is getting what? Sometimes there's some hidden people that are chopping from you from behind that you don't know about. Mm -hmm. You must know. Yes, now. That's why you heard stories from the likes of Little Richard. You hear their stories. Those people in the United, in, in the United States, Bookie, you hear their stories now. How they... Look at Neil Edition. Look at Neil Edition of all... Ah. So I take my time. Hmm. I take my time. But I insisted. I say, Amy Oshala, LPD deal. Nimo fair. Licensing, pressing, and distribution. So that way, after those two years, my masters revert back to me. I'm very, very careful, Bookie. 
I don't, I don't give my masters. I cannot give my masters to anybody. How much are you giving me? Your masters, that's your treasure. That's your, that's your, that's your every treasure. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that blessed is the man who leaves an inheritance behind. Yes, yes. So, your, hey, don't joke around with your publishing. Sometimes people tell me, I beg, this word I'm saying, she don't they talk to you, I you both date too much. Hmm. When it comes back to bite you, you will know. Now, Buki, we have tons of artists putting their videos on the major TV stations. Are those videos tagged? Do you, have you assigned like your ISRC codes? Your ISRC codes <laughs> to those videos. Your login, your metadata information. Whenever you play an Ejoya video in any country, I must be able to know. I will go to my dashboard. I will check my insights. Okay, this, they played it here. They played it here. When I gave my video to MTV, I, you know, after they have played and played and played it, I had PRS membership and MCPS. They just called me. They just phoned me one day. Oh, wait, MC, you have some money waiting for you in the bank account in the United Kingdom. They've been playing your videos. Bookie. Good. But I had I had put certain things in place. You understand? It's not just about jumping out there. I won't blow, you know, as if you're a bomb. I want to blow. Hey, worry me. Look at Instagram. Oh, look at my Bugatti. Look at my Ferrari. Irolo bad day. The real deal. Ensure your your business side is in place. Mm. Your deals are in place. Yes. Yes. Uh, anybody can come. They could come for synchronization, you know, opportunities. Uh, okay, you know how it is now. It could be move, it could be music supervisors for movies, video games, you know, it could be maybe the football matches, it could be um air, you know, air air travel opportunities. Sometimes all these airlines they license your, 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 your you know, anything. So because you put those things in place, automatic, it's called passive income. It just flows in there like water. You don't even know that it's there. One day, you know, you just get, a, you just get your last. You just say, hmm, you know? Yeah. Okay, to a joke. <laughs> no, for real. But you have to put those things in place. You have to. Very important. Wow, wow. Because we're talking about a recording contract now and someone is listening and saying, I'm not a musician. I don't care about that. Whenever you're going into any relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, mommy, uh, whatever, never let desperation drive you, I beg. Never yeah. negotiate your future when you're hungry. You will do crazy things. Hungry people yes. do crazy things. You know? Yes. So I'm just thinking here, and I'm, I'm saying, what structure are we putting in place? for this new generation so that they know mm. these things because it's not enough for us to say it. How do we get yep. to let them see that, listen, this is your pension. You know, yep. you have to separate these things. You can't just let somebody be the Lord over your master, over your videos, over your, you know, it's too much power to give one person, spread it out. Yep. What are you doing yep. to make sure that, you know, you go back home and put a structure in place to help people? What I would love to do for starters, Bookie, is have some mentorship one-on-one -on -one sessions. Like, let's, let's talk. This house that we have built, let's tear it down mm -hmm. and let's rebuild. Hmm. The Bible says that if the righteous, if the foundation is not right, what can the righteous do? So you readdress the foundation. Put the pillars in place. Put something in place. Start speaking to the artist. They're different. Things. It, lots of things. If you're my artist, you cannot even go out there to do one interview. You have me give you me media training. Have you, have you noticed that a lot of artists, they don't really know how to answer questions. They don't really know how to grant interviews. Not, just, not only just do they don't know how, they don't know when. Everything is about timing. Everything is about strategy. There's a time and there's a season. Uh -uh. Remember now, the Lord said to... He said to Abraham, at a particular time of life, I will come back and Sarah would conceive. Isaac will come. So there's a time and season to everything. So you plan ahead. Mm. We speak to them. Say, for example, you and I were dropping elbows on, on the same day. We shouldn't be doing that. Let the, let the managers come together. Let them agree. My artist is going to drop an album maybe in January. Okay, mine will drop in February. Mine will drop in March. Space out the releases. 
don't just all drop your albums on the same day or in the same month. It's too much. That's too much for the fans to consume. Space things out. Plan ahead. How do I want to see you? Isn't that going to only be possible when there's unity among yes. the yep. people? Yep. Yes. So how do we address the issue of unity? Because it's like unity. on United Kingdom, everybody's their own little king in their own island. And they're, yes. you know, how do, how do we bring unity? Because they say, about Lewaloja, Kiori Omotutunwo, what ben. are we going to do to ensure that, you know, we can have 25 years in the industry and not be able to put a structure in place. How do we bring the love back? Because remember, I would have my birthday party. You would come. Sasha would come. We would all have a party oh, and stay. Let the people would arrange it. How is yes. it that now? There's so much segregation and my kingdom must be bigger than your kingdom and all that. It's not about um, good music anymore. It's about, yeah. I'm a fan of this person. I don't care if your music is good. I'm not, but how do we stop that? Um, Buki, reorientation. Um, dialogue. I truly and sincerely believe in the power of dialogue. I feel like there's, I feel like there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of you know, distrust. And then people are paranoid. paranoid. And I'll keep saying this. And I'll keep saying this. Okay, on. Life Farakora. Inuibu Utejawe. Life Farakora. Translate that. I for everybody. We can shine. Look, there's enough for everybody to eat. There's an abundance. You understand? I feel like when people start to talk, it tears down the barriers. There's too much ego flying around in the air. You know, my kingdom, your kingdom, my posse, your posse. I want to be number one. Cut it out, especially for the females. This is a brilliant time for the females to actually come together. There are tons of females out there now. There's Tiwa, there's Simi, there's everybody, there's Wumi, there's everybody. It's amazing. I love it. This is a time. Come together. Shock people. Do collabs. Hang out. You know, you can't even do picnics. Go to parties. You know, because okay, the more we the more we fellowship, the more the more you tear down the barriers. But everybody is like paranoid, looking over their shoulder. Eli, this one is trying to take my food from me. No, there's enough to go around, especially now. Uh -uh, look at it now. Endorsement opportunities. Now the concert culture has come into Nigeria. What do we need now? We need concert venues. The fans are, are so loyal right now. The fans are really, really consuming that African content. Mm. This is a time. Mm. Put that aside. Put the ego aside. Come together as one. We're one. I'm telling you, see, the lesson from this COVID-19 thing, if you haven't learned from it, it, it will be a shame. The Lord is drawing us to himself. The Lord wants us to readdress our mindsets. Mindset. Do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing mm. of your mind. Be transformed. That's what I feel. It starts with dialogue. What did, ah, even the one who created us, what did he say? He said, come, let's reason. Together. Come, let's reason together. Let's speak. We are created for, for fellowship. I do understand this whole, no, I don't, want to be, I don't want to be seen with that person. No, we have to have that foundation of love. It's important, Buki. It's so, uh, uh, look at Charlie Wilson. Look at, how they, look at how they're celebrating him. Look at how they still celebrate New Edition, Lana, Richie, they still tour. They still go out, they still go out on the road. Nobody's saying, I beg. I beg, those ones don't hold, I beg. They're not irrelevant again. I beg, I beg, I beg. You understand? Promoters come. Endorsement opportunities come. It's about the content. For me, Buki, in an absence of love, the house cannot stand. Mm. The house cannot stand. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm just listening to you because I'm trying to reason along the line of some of the younger people I've spoken to. When Idi Kabusa was here, he said, uh, he made a, a point. It's a Yoruba adage. Please, if you remember, Jide, help me, remind me of the adage. He said, 
a, a child cannot have, oh, no, that the child should remember that the rag of today was once mm. in vogue. That thing you're using then, as rag today, there was a time someone wore it and it was, do you understand what, it, what I'm saying? Yes, 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 yes. When you speak to a lot of these new people, they think maybe because they have a large following, they have maybe you're trying to glean from their shine and then when, when i spoke with kabasa about this he was like buki eron alasho de onileti ipe akisa was once in vogue you know oti nobari yes man i said that thing like 10 times over and over in my mind so i'll never forget cuz i've never heard it before you know but um so how do we're talking about love this is motive now because you you can't you can't see love except in my heart yeah so yes. if i were talking about love but they are thinking about something else how do you imagine you and i speaking now you speaking perfect english and i'm speaking perfect french we're both professors in our own field but we cannot communicate because communication is when you pass the message from a to b without anything lost in the middle so how do you now convince someone that they feel oh they you are trying to glean from my shine how do you convince them that i have what can help you how does that work because until you feel i'm adding value to you right you will not give me you know an audience so how do you think that can be done buki dialogue let me I'll give let me give you an example <clears throat> one day just out of the blue omoni oboli reached out to me that's love right there do you understand that's love you understand i would speak to inse stella damasos funala o ahofi ab that's love dakoria konde that's love we're not even talking about the professional we just talk we just gist we just share and compare notes compare because as a time as that was the, that was, I was in a bit of a dark place but Omoni Oboli reached out to me and encouraged me she ministered to me she was sharing some experiences with me and that uplifted me i'm like wow i, I will not it's just dialogue okay or maybe we need or maybe maybe we need a mediator a go between you know maybe we need an earthly mediator because we do have a mediator already Yeah. You understand? Maybe maybe we need that or maybe I don't know. The things that we ah look at how you and I and Sasha clicked. We just clicked. We will talk, we will hang out. Ah, no reservations, no hang-ups, nothing. We will talk. We don't even we, we hardly even talk about music. Mm, we just true. talk. We just hang out, we just talk. You understand? And we there was there was no ah, I didn't feel comfortable around you and vice versa. That's how it should be. I think we 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 get it too we're taking things too seriously. We're getting too hung up about you know I'm a star. Mm -hmm. But you don't know. Let's enhance one another. Mm -hmm. Let's uplift one another. Mm. For me that's the only way. Mm. That's the only way. Yes. And you know what there are some keywords that you say on this show that gets my heart pumping and my ears you know going uh -huh. like this and my eyes twitching. And that's when you said dark place. So, yes. You're going to take <laughs> some light and shed it on that dark place. Would you kindly share with us what that was and how you came you overcame it? Um I think I just got to a point where I was like I was just down. I was just like, "Okay, Lord, what's next? What's next for me? Where do I go from here?" Okay, now that I'm starting to know you, I'm reading the word, I'm praying, what next? Why am I here? Why am I here on earth? Why did you create me? I started to ask questions, you understand? But at the same time, I sort of like missed what I do. You understand? I felt I started to feel idle, you know, then a, a hint of depression started to set in, you know, I lost confidence and everything. and i just lost interest in everything and then no more lost died you know things were just piling up on each other i was like what's going on you know that hit me hard you know mentally 
And but I just started to pray. I just started to pray. Very good friends to come around. I have a, I have a friend called Cynthia Shokumbi. You know, she would talk to me. She would minister to me. You know, I became, I, I became really isolated and everything. But she would just keep calling and calling. People would call my friend Tonia, my friend Falake. Then they just started to pull me out of my shell, you know, gradually. And they pulled me out. But, but I'll listen to sermons. I'll listen to hymns, you know. I really started to like the hymns, the songs, you know. And I started to come out gradually, gradually. And like I said, messages from people. Stella Damasus would reach out, would speak to me, would minister to me, would encourage me. Now, you, what's wrong with you? You, you that we're looking up to you. Are you okay? You understand? <laughs> so, I just thank God. Honestly, I just, Buki, I'm just so thankful. It's amazing. Anytime I see Daystar, you, you know you were, the, you, were the first, you were the person who took me to Daystar for the first time. And then years later, that's where I ended up. You know, and I'd have a, I met uh, Pastor Sam. <laughs> he still asks after you, actually. He still asks after you. Wait, so uh, I want to say something very key now. I was the first person who took you to Daystar. If yes. you were a secular artist, because yes. that image, people say, Buki, you always like to associate with all these unbelievers. Is it good for you as a God who has it to be? They don't sound like that, but to me, that's how they sound. You know, but yeah. you know that, is it right? What is the role of a Christian now that you've found God? What is the role of a Christian in embracing the people that are seemingly lost? Um, mm -hmm. Buki, always remember that line. Sure. What did he say? He said, I did not come for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. Sinners to repentance. And just before he left, he said, in my name, in my name, preach repentance and the remission of sins. We cannot just stay within the church. There's too much light in the church. Take the light out into the darkness. You know, speak, to, show them the love of Christ. Speak to people. That's what he did. Be, honestly, Buki, it's that simple. That's what he, do you know, that's what he actually did. People used to like, what? They used to murmur, why is he eating of sinners? Why is he mingling with sinners? He said, but that's why I came. That, that's, what, that's what I came for. So who, who am I supposed to mingle with? That's why I'm here. Look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus climbs a tree. Zacchaeus, come down. Today I'm going to eat at your place. And people were complaining. Thank you, you know, Jesus. You know, the with his ring. See, see him always with the wine bypass and all these people. You know? Yeah. No, but it is true because you're making sense. There's so much light in this place right now. There's no, I don't need light. Your light only shines in the dark. So I think yes. every Christian listening to this, take all the all the edges. Come on, man. Let's show love. Because he said something. Let me tell you. I don't want to stop preaching because we have six minutes more. But he said that by this, only this. I don't care about your speaking in tongues. I don't care about you. He even said if you raise the dead, you did the this, you do the that. If you don't have love, you are like a sounding, sounding gong. As in like you are empty <laughs> and I don't want anything. He said by this shall all men know that you are mine. Yes. When you have yes. love for one another. And I think yes. because of that, we, we, we fall short as Christians. We always we have this thing, they are away from us. They are not part of us. These ones are this. You know, and it's not right at all. And I think it's the enemy that keeps us in that bubble. Superiority, yeah. oh, you are a sinner. You, you are a sinner. Context. How dare you? Do you understand what I'm saying? How? Booking. Context. Context. They need to go back into they need to go back into the word and see what the what the commission is. Context. That's that's why we do you know that's why we're actually here. We're, 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 stay, we're waiting behind so we can carry out, we can carry on doing his work. He said, You are my witnesses. We are his witnesses. And you're not saved only for you. Somebody snatched you out of hell, you gotta go out there and snatch others out of hell. That's honestly, that's why we're actually here. But it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop with us just knowing the word or hearing the word. We have to do the word because what does the, what does the um, book of James say? You know, he that hears the word and is not a doer, you're deceiving yourself. And he said, he who hears my teachings and does not and does not do them, 
Do you understand? You're building a house on the sand. So we have to do. He said, see, do what you see me do. That's what we need to do. So in the music, we have to show the heart of the father. The heart of the father has to come through now in our music, in how we speak, in how we relate to people, in where we go. You start to this and they just say, there's just something about you. And you pray, oh, it's Christ in me. Oh, hi, how are you? Like, you are the Bible that people are actually reading. It's later. But when they meet you, you're the word that they're reading. So they should see Christ in you. They should encounter Christ within you. Because otherwise, you say, you're, we're hypocrites. You know, because if you say, okay, I know the word, I know the scriptures, okay, you know all this scripture, okay, what are you doing with it? Are you doing the word? Are you live? Am I? Are we living out the word? Hmm. Are we showing the love of Christ, that agape love, and which has oh, been shared in our God. hearts? God help us. We, ah, <laughs> amen. No, for real, it's it's really, really, really important. The amen. gospel should not be hid. It should be preached. It should be we preached. The light. We are the light. A city on a hill. We are the salt. Salt preserves. Light sheds. Yes. Light reveals. Right reveals. We can't be in our bubble thinking we're holier, you know? And um, man, if we have three minutes more, this is so crazy, man. Listen, we <laughs> love you. God bless you so much for coming to Bookie's Place. How do we, so now that you're born again, are you going to start singing gospel songs or you're just going to keep it neutral? Or you're, are you going to sing again? I'm just going to, I'm just going to sing and just, I'm just, I just want the, 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 the living waters to cut, to flow through. That, that, that's what it is. You know, like I said, I'm not here for the shows. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily here anymore just for the shows. Cause out of my belly, let the living water flow. You know, that's what I want. That's what I want people to hear. Open time. People open time. time. Catch up. Every time people start selling, they show like a shop. Every time, listen, man, listen. It has to, it has to be organic, you know. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. We have twelve. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Papa T is in the building. Yo, Papa T. Listen, man. Pray <laughs> for me, man. I read your article. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you, man. Share for me, share for me, man. Yeah, yeah. That's my yeah, yeah. Love you, love you, love you. We have one minute more. Listen, man. We love you. We got you. Thank you for everything you did in the music industry. Thank you for everything you. you're doing. Thank you for all the plans and all the structure you're putting in place to educate the next generation, whether they see it or not. We love you. We got you. God love bless you. you. Can I get like, we love you. We love you. We love you. Where? We love, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Are you going to be doing any music soon? Yes. Yes. I'm gonna send. I'm even gonna send you some stuff tonight for okay. you to listen to. All right. Okay. We have 28 I, seconds. I felt, I felt like dog in the crates. Dog out some classics and I'll send them to you. All right. No worries, man. We love you so much. 20 seconds left. Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, God bless you. Have a great weekend.